Alright guys, welcome back to Orbe Rookie. In today's video, I built something that I've been wanting to for a really long time. A rocket launch controller. Now you might be wondering why I bother making one of these instead of just building it online. Well, I just want to fly bigger rockets. Most store-bought controllers are fine with SD's motors. But once you get into the medium class of motors, you need something with more distance, more power, and even a little bit more safety. So I decided to design and build my own. <sighs> like most of my projects, it didn't go well the first time. So let's talk about what I needed for this build. I went for a missile style switch. Not because that's what everyone uses, even though it is. But it also just looks really cool. And it's got a safety cover so you can't automatically flip it on. Which I thought was a very nice touch. After that, I grabbed some LEDs. Again, mostly because they just look cool, but also because they're a good visual cue to know if your system is armed or not. After that, I got some gator clips, a fire button, a box, and a couple more things off of Amazon to make it all easier. Now the wires is where things get serious. I went with 30 feet of wire because that's the recommended safe amount for the medium class rocket motors that I'm going to be firing. And I built this controller to handle the next step up. And 30 feet is kind of standard for that class. And then the battery. In my system, I used a 12 volt battery with seven and a half amp hours. And that's plenty of juice to set off igniters all day long. And it just so happens to be the perfect size for the box that I chose. Really, most of my part choices came from three different things. Does it look cool? Is it safe? And will it work? Now, before we go any further, let's talk about safety for a second. Model rocketry has a set of safety guidelines, and one of the big ones is distance. If you're using bigger motors, you can't just stand a couple feet away from the pad. For medium class motors, the National Association of Rocketry recommends at least 30 feet of distance from you and the pad. And that's why I went with 30 feet of wire. So I'd meet those standards and not be too close whenever the motor ignited. Another important part of safety is having a proper interlock. That's where the missile style switch comes in. When it's flipped off, the circuit is completely dead, which means that there's no way the rocket can fire, even if someone hits the fire button. And the LED makes it obvious to tell if the system is armed or not. And of course, never get too close to your rocket whenever the igniter's in or the system is armed. It's simple stuff, but it makes a huge difference in rocketry, and it keeps everyone safe. And just to be clear, this isn't a tutorial. I'm just showing you what I built, not step-by-step -step instructions. If you want to build your own, make sure you research everywhere and follow the proper safety rules. With safety covered, I started designing the control panel itself. I had to measure everything. The box, the battery, the spacing of the holes, what I was most worried about was getting the spacing of the holes off. If they were even a couple millimeters off, I would have to redesign the part and it could take hours to 3D print it again. Again, as per usual, I modeled everything in Onshape. I didn't learn any new tricks this time, but I got repetition and it made me faster. And the beauty of 3D printing is that when I did mess something up, like the test holes for the switches that I made, I could just redesign and reprint and it wouldn't take too long. It's way easier than cutting wood, metal, and it's way cheaper. Once the design looked good, I moved on to 3D printing. I printed panels, struts, and braces. Basically, the skeleton of the controller and the thing that held the battery in place. And this is where I hit my first fail. I think I was watching YouTube, or maybe a Twitch stream, but either way, I got distracted. So instead of paying attention to what I should have been doing, I was watching something else. And in the process, I glued one of the panels incorrectly. That meant the hole for the switch was way too close to the battery and the control panel wouldn't fit. And once I glued those struts, that thing was way stronger than I had expected. It's actually so strong. I couldn't pull it apart even if I tried. I ended up literally breaking the panels and throwing them away. I think I'm gonna have to reprint the whole thing. Oh my gosh. I was so close. How did I mess it up like that? Now I have to reprint the entire part. Actually, I have to reprint all seven parts. Oh my gosh. I was this close to getting that print perfect. So I had to restart from scratch. It was painful, but it happens. So back to square one. I reprinted everything, and this time I made sure I wasn't watching anything and I was focused on my task at hand. Once the frame was solid, it was time for wiring. This meant cutting and splicing wires, heat shrinking connections, wiring the switch and buttons, and then finally soldering everything in place. And of course, I messed that up too. <sighs> Now we have to rewire this. I wired the LED to the wrong side of the switch, which meant the LED was always on. After that, I had to unsolder them, switch the wire to the other side of the switch, re-screw them in, and then solder them back. Lesson learned, don't solder anything until you are 100% sure that it's correct. Now, if you're wondering how the circuit actually works, it's pretty simple. The battery powers the system, the missile switch acts as a safety, the LED is an indicator light showing that the system is armed, and the fire button sends power to the igniter clips. It's pretty basic, but effective. And that's why I wanted the missile switch. 
When it's flipped off, there's absolutely no chance of igniting the rocket. It's just a comfortable extra layer of safety. To wrap it up, I painted the control panel to make it look pretty good. After that, I drilled a clean hole in the box for the pad wires. Then I test fit the battery, and at this point, it was starting to look like a legit project, not just a hobby, even though it is. Of course, I couldn't show off a launch controller without actually launching something, can I? Problem is, all of my rockets are out of commission, so I went and I got a quick SD's kit that looks like a missile with US Army down the side of it. I don't want to make this a big part of the video because the whole video is about the launch controller, but here's a quick montage of the build and paint process. And finally, it's launch day. I walked the pad out, set the controller up, and got all my cameras ready. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous. A while back, I had problems with the battery. It was brand new, but I was having problems with it charging. So I took it to AutoZone to check it to make sure its levels were fine. But they told me it was only at 9 volts, when in reality, it should have been above 12. So I went and I bought my own multimeter, and I tested it myself, and it tested it at 12.8. So I was good. But even knowing that, when you're standing out there at the pad, about to hit the button, you always have that one thought in the back of your head. What if it doesn't work? I flipped the safety, hit the fire button, and the rocket took off clean. The controller worked exactly how I wanted it to. And then, Orbit Rookie's luck struck again. As I was going to recover the rocket, I saw it floating in the air, and I looked down at my phone to try and get a video of it. But when I looked back up, it was gone. I don't think I have it on camera. <gasps> no! Well, I think it's in the trees again. We gotta stop doing this. I searched for more than 30 minutes scouring the area, circling the trees, the roads, and I was even driving around. No way I did it again, man. I launched when the wind was low, I'm in a big open field, and yet somehow I hit the only trees here. But in the end, there's no luck. <sighs> I lost it again. I can't find it. I've been searching for a while all up and down these trees. I really didn't want this to become like a thing for me, but next time I'm gonna have to find like the most open field possible where there's literally no trees. Cause this is getting ridiculous. We've lost how many rockets so far? We haven't even been used the channel that long. 
and that makes the third or fourth rocket that I've lost just on this channel alone. At this point, it's practically a tradition. So technically, the rocket failed, but that wasn't the main point of the video. The control, on the other hand, worked flawlessly. So that's my homemade launch controller. A lot of work, a couple of mistakes, but in the end, it worked perfectly. If you like this build, hit subscribe. There's plenty more rockets, builds, and definitely more failures coming in the near future. Anyways, thanks for watching, and remember to stay curious and aim for orbit.